Hello, this is Justin with ABR. We got Alex Klein in town from Louisiana. Uh, he's a kind of a long-term patient of ours here. Uh, he's come up because he needs a tune-up on the current fit and function of his prosthesis. He's been wearing a leg for how many years? Uh, 12 now. 12, 12 years. years. So he was one of the original ABR uh, patients we had the opportunity to work with. He came to us with like a conventional type of prosthesis that had a large cosmetic cover over it. It was held on with a suspension sleeve. And so even before he got this leg, he was transitioned to some sort of posterior mount foot that we have here. This is an Aris performance foot. It's a good smooth uh, walking foot and it allows for a lot of clearance. Obviously Alex has a long residual limb. Um, I believe Alex is a Symes amputation. Yeah. He has a Symes amputation. And so uh, sometimes you don't have clearance for a good foot distally. So what we do here at ABR a lot of times is uh, mount and posterior mount so they can have a, a higher functioning foot without worrying about clearance. So he had this foot because it had a lot of clearance to it and he's been using this walking foot for several years. There's a lot of tape on here now because he's very active. He's, he's a competitive sprinter, even like on the junior Olympic, Paralympic level for sprinting. Uh, so this is his walking foot. He also has a running blade. And so uh, obviously he's had this for several years. He's been breaking it. He came to us this past week because he's been growing and having some fit issues and also a broken foot. So he's used to this uh, anatomical, Kind of skin fit slash one ply fit P light system here with just a, a P light liner stove pipe to allow it to expand and then to capture the anatomy distally. So, what he does is he wears a sock, he puts this P light on his leg, and he pushes down into the socket and it suspends anatomically with a one to three ply fit over the P light here. Um, because of his activities previously and his higher activity, he's in college now and so. He still runs, still enjoys being active, but he's not sprinting at the competitive level that he once was. And so he's used to having trim lines around his knee that encompass you know, his medial and lateral condyles. Having trim lines this, like this are very nice for support, uh, for high activity, just to prevent strain on the knee when they're performing high activities. Uh, what we've transitioned to him now is basically the same setup right here with a stovepipe P light, but we lowered his trim lines. And so uh, the reason why he's here, I'm gonna have you slip your prosthesis off for me, Alex. And just, uh, we can look at his residual limb really quick. Uh, so, yes, please. so he's, he's not very bulbous distally, but he is bulbous enough to uh, capture uh, an, an anatomical suspension. So over time, he's gotten more bulbous uh, anatomically, not so much volumetrically. So right here, I can feel his tibia, and it bows out right here, I guess, where his uh, medial and lateral malleoli once were. So there's enough anatomy here to suspend, and we are suspending distally right here, and he is supporting all his body weight on the distal end of, of his heel pad there. So this is uh, how we suspend it, even on a smaller residual limb that's not as bulbous, there's still some bulbousness to capture his anatomy for anatomical p -light suspension. Uh, so like I was mentioning earlier, we have different trim lines. Uh, so what we uh, like about these trim lines is it frees up his knee and his muscles that can control his prosthesis more using his anatomical uh, muscles and bones versus having a, basically a brace around his knee supporting his body weight and all the forces he experiences when walking. Uh, we performed uh, you know, a varus and valgus laxity test and anterior jaw test to check for laxity because this trim line is not appropriate for everyone with a lot of laxity in, in their knee. He has good strength, he has good uh, ligaments there, everything is intact, so we were able to go away from a lower trim line. We went with a lower trim line just because he's not as active anymore and anytime you can get the patient to uh, use their own muscles and put a little more stress on their actual anatomy, it actually makes things stronger. So over time, instead of hindering movement and restricting motion and uh, not allowing him to use his muscles all the time, we're going to promote growth and promote bone density through more force going through his knee and having the patient actually control himself. Uh, so the differences between this socket and this socket is the same besides the trim lines and the foot. This is a posterior mount all pro. Uh, this foot just offers a little bit more dynamics as far as uh, energy return to it. Uh, this is more springy th than this foot here and this one is not broken than this one here. So uh, we have more build height and clearance you know, as he's gotten taller and grown that's why we're able to, to transition to this posterior mount foot. So I'm just have Alex put the, his leg on really quick so you guys can see. Uh, this is a swift wick, sweat wicking sock um, that he wears on his skin and sometimes he adds another one to two ply depending on what he's doing He's been done a lot of walking this morning. So he's uh Socking up to happiness a little bit. So this is just one more ply there 
And we also transitioned from a, uh, I think, 8 or 10 millimeter P-Lite to a 6 millimeter P-Lite. So that just cuts down on the bulk and the weight of the prosthesis. You know, as he's gotten stronger and tougher over time, you don't need as much padding. And uh, it just has an effect on the weight, not so much uh, the way the innings look. It does make the uh, cosmetic of the prosthesis a little bit more slimmer. Uh, but anytime we can decrease the weight, that always takes away uh, energy expenditure, which is a good thing. So that's how he slips in, and now, now his leg is on, and it's uh, stove piped anatomically, and that's how it is suspending right there. Um, so he's had his leg for about three days now, maybe two days, and we've been playing around with some alignment. And because of the trim lines are lower, he's been noticing uh, standing, maybe shifting into valgus or walking, going into bears. So we've played with this adduction angle a little bit to accommodate his feedback here. But uh, after changing a few times, we've kind of noted that if he uses his muscles to control that, he can eliminate a lot of those varus or valgus moments statically or dynamically. So that's just been the biggest change. One is uh, the foot, which is a more dynamic foot. Because it's more dynamic, you gotta put more energy in the toe to utilize the spring and the propulsion it gives you. And uh, because of that, that affects the way the forces are going, the ground reaction forces on the knee. And also the lower trim lines, because you don't, we're not bracing him right here, there's a little bit more uh, laxity in his knee when he's walking, just from the lower trim lines, not so much his ligaments. So he's learned to control his muscles differently to control this foot and to control the socket and the trim line. So anytime you can kind of promote the patient using their own muscles to control the prosthesis, now have the prosthesis control them. Uh, we kind of feel that will lead to a healthy joint capsule, healthy muscles long term. And so uh, now that you've had this foot in this socket, besides the things I've mentioned, what other things have you noticed about it that you're liking and you're figuring out for yourself, Alex? Um, I mean, I definitely like the lower trim lines long term. It'll like help me. Uh, keep my muscles stronger uh, as I get older. Um, the whole thing, it fits a little tighter around my leg. The other, I've shrunk uh, since that leg. So this is just a better fit in the socket. Um, and it's, I can hold on a little better at the end of my leg. Um, yeah, and this one's even lighter too. Um, I think the way you'll, the, I don't know what this is called. Yeah, so we're used a post mount bracket back here. And uh, if you can see, the, the bolt pattern and the bracket pattern has just advanced in the kind of the hardware over the years. And you can tell the profile of this foot compared to this foot. So just less materials all together, slightly different fabrication. But if I were to weigh them, I'd say there's definitely at least a pound to two pound difference in, in both sockets. So same suspension, same posterior mount foot, just slightly different materials and slightly different fabrication method has allowed, have a, has allowed us to get a lighter weight prosthesis. Um, yeah, he's gonna go back to college and kill it in this foot and then uh, let us know when he needs something and then this will last you know he last time he was here was how long a couple about four years ago so this leg lasted him four years with just a couple of different sock changes and then eventually due to normal limb atrophy he shrunk up enough to where it was time to um, tune him up a little bit and get him going full speed again so uh good luck out there alex you're gonna do good work man Appreciate all right you're welcome <laughs>